Welcome back to another 2024 Senate prediction today covering all the swing states and just telling you how these things are going to go if the election were held today. So some key facts before we get to the map. We know that Donald Trump is winning the popular vote in the polls right now. And for the general election, we have Joe Biden's presidential approval rating being negative 16.4% and under 40% in most recent polls. Now, referring to the Senate map as we see it completely blank, I'll fill it in to the extent to which we don't have to talk about certain elections that are too far out. Okay, just to preface something right here, for the record, okay, when you look at Maine, Maine is something that is somewhat of a purple state as of the last 15 years, but what you need to notice in the Trump era is that Angus King is a guy who is an independent but basically caucuses with the Democrats, will vote liberal on virtually any policy, and he's very popular. So just imagine an independent marked Amy Klobuchar sort of politician. I mean, that's like the same strain of niche political ideology that he follows. So anyway, that's going to be a blue state basically for all intents and purposes. But when we go into other states, uh, again, Hawaii might be closer than usual, but still really bad for the Republicans. Another point I wanted to make here is Missouri. OK, Missouri just shows uh, polarization. What I mean with Missouri is that in 2012, Claire McCaskill, under the Obama reelection campaign, won by about 12 to 15 percent, if I remember correctly, whereas she lost to Joshua Hawley in 2018 by like six percent. So polarization is going to take precedent in a general election uh, over uh, incumbency and basically uh, seniority. So keep that in mind. So red Missouri, of course, but that gets to the point, okay? So, for example, Sherrod Brown, again, won in 2018, but he's likely to lose given the fact that at the presidential level, you have a guy in Donald Trump who po who's poised to lead the Buckeye State by about 12. So if that's true, we're going to give that to the Republicans. But also, chief amongst these races, again, we have 2024 Senate election going red in Florida. Florida uh, has the Rick Scott effect. Okay, Rick Scott is known for winning by less than a percent in every election he's involved in. But what does that mean? That means he wins anyway. I think he'll win by like 10. Whoever he's running against, I don't even know, folks. But anyway, let's go to West Virginia. West Virginia is another state that has a blue incumbent, but not really. It's an open seat. In fact, uh, the Democratic candidate that's running for that race isn't popular at all, has no uh, national buzz. The DNC is not investing anything into that race. So that kind of tends you to believe that the state is going uh, red in all facets, including Senate. Uh, Joe Manchin, again, is retiring. He's not even running third party, which he was alluding to in the first place. Joe Manchin is just destitute. He's felt it. It's over, folks. So red West Virginia, clock that in. Doesn't matter who runs. You could have a... You could have Jeffrey Epstein run for Republican West Virginia Senate. He'd probably still win. So just lock that one in. Um, now, Tim Kaine's another state. Okay, so Virginia is going to be closer than it was in 2020 and 2016, in my opinion. It'll be like a four-point win for Biden at this rate. Here's the thing, though. Tim Kaine is a 60-something-year-old white guy, Hillary-type, uh, Democrat, neoliberal, one of those good old boys. That really works well in Virginia, believe it or not. It's like center right, center left. That's the way they like it down there, especially in the Nova counties in the north near uh, Alexandria, D.C., that sort of beltway, sort of a uh, circuit. So I, I predict that as a blue state. Next state I wanted to talk about is New Mexico. New Mexico has Martin Heinrich as the incumbent against Dominici, who's the daughter of a guy who was in the Senate for like upwards of 20 years. So while that might seem like an important advantage and even increasing the name recognition, the fact is, is that nobody freaking cares, okay? And a lot of political nerds will be like, well, I studied maps. Oh my God, I know exactly what I'm talking about. And the truth is they don't have a clue, okay? Just because, imagine, you're trying to flip these like 35-year-old millennial voters for Biden in 2024 to vote Republican. And you're going to say, well, my dad was senator in the 2000s. Nobody cares. So obviously, she's probably going to lose, to be honest. Mark Ronchetti is the only guy who could possibly flip this thing. And probably not even that. Uh, Martin Heinrich won his last election by 24 points from my recollection. So there's no way he fumbles unless he gets caught doing something really bad. So we're leaving that blue for now. Going to the state of Texas. Texas is going Republican as well. Colin Alred is a guy who has no juice, no sauce. And Teddy Cruz is also not a great politician either, but he's also a Republican. So he's winning Texas. In a state that Trump's going to win by upwards of 10, he will win the state. Um, going on to Minnesota. Minnesota doesn't have a lot of polls. The reason being is that Amy Klobuchar has a lot of poll in the state. Amy Klobuchar has a ton of clout, a lot of sauce. In fact, when you look at the facts here, folks, Amy Klobuchar is the type that will totally dominate the politic in, 
uh, Minnesota as long as she would like to. She was actually somebody who was involved in uh, letting Derek Chauvin go in 2006, I think when she was attorney general in Minnesota, basically for some unrelated charge. So you might think, whoa, is she one of us? No, she's not. She's not conservative. She's a liberal, basically a substitute teacher is the vibe you're looking at for this candidate. And yet she's super popular in Minnesota. She won 2018 by a whole lot. And in 2020, the Senate election wasn't that far off for the Republicans. That being said, that guy isn't running anymore from what I understand. So if that's true, then it's not looking so hot. If that's the case, then we're giving Minnesota a blue rating in this election. Moving on, we have Montana. Montana is a state that Trump is uh, poised to win by like 20%. So unless you have a literal offender of the sexual kind, Running as a Republican, I think the GOP is going to win this up and down the ballot. I think it's going to be all red. All you need to see here is a Republican fill in because realistically speaking, John Tester, whoever the guy is, an incumbent, it doesn't matter in a stratified bipolar or polarized society that we live in politically. It doesn't matter who's the incumbent. When the guy at the top of the ticket is winning by 20, it doesn't matter who you're running beneath that because there's not enough people that really, 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 really care about politics enough to actually fill in something that contradicts what they're voting on top. So just keep this in mind, okay? For example, when you're voting and there's like student uh, student board, uh, municipal, whatever, when you're voting, do you vote Republican because you're Republican or do you actually have a nuanced opinion about some like D-list politician in your local area? Answer is you most likely don't even care. So I think that logic extends to people in Montana. They say, OK, I'm voting for Trump. Why the hell would I vote for a Democrat? And you can say, well, John Tester's a uh, blue dog. Nobody cares. Oh, he's a moderate. I didn't care. Nobody asked. I think it's going red infallible logic like the pope exaggerating because i'm not catholic but anyway moving on let's go to pennsylvania i think pennsylvania will go blue rich mccormick is not a great politician folks he just isn't it okay when you're looking at uh who's tending to win it's not going to be a guy who's like this billionaire carpetbagger at least that's like what they're hitting him with seems like shades of Mehmet oz 2022 but kind of even worse because again less charisma wasn't on tv and what's more than that is that he's going against a strong opponent in Robert Casey Jr., who, unlike Tester, is going to have bona fides that appeal to the moderate wing of the Pennsylvania voter sect, which makes you think personally that he's going to win by a lot, as evidenced by the slaughtering of Rick Santorum in 2006, a strong victory in 2012. Uh, he outperformed Obama in Pennsylvania by 4 to 5% in 2012 even. So if he outperforms Biden by 4 to 5%, then he's likely to win, especially against a weak sauce candidate of the like such as, for example, this guy in Rich McCormick, I think his name is. So Bob McCormick, nobody cares. Moving on. Okay, Michigan. Michigan's an important state. It's an open seat. Debbie Stabenow, old market, dollar store market thratcher sort of like look. Let's see the poll. These polls do not look promising at all, folks. If you look at it, it's Ty, Slotkin, W slightly. We look at 538. Again, the primary is wide open. So there's really no prediction to make here. Uh, you know, all roads lead to it being slightly blue for the only reason that we cannot decide on a candidate. Peter Myers running for this primary, apparently, according to some websites here. Peter Myers, a liberal, like anti Trump ginger, you know, just terrible. Again, Amash, also another diehard libertarian. I hate him. Uh, Penciler, nobody knows who that is. Rogers, again, James Craig, who's like this black uh, police chief quit the race for some reason. So we're going to leave that as a slight blue state for now. But if the Republicans get their act together, we can lock it in. OK, but until then, we're going to leave that as blue. Now, imagine this, folks. We have three more states. Let's go to Wisconsin. OK, we have Eric Hovday, the presumable nominee for the Republican Party against a person named Tammy Baldwin, who's bisexual. So anyway, let's see what the polls say. We're only working with four polls on RCP aggregates. OK, so the poll from last month, has Baldwin up by seven, which is highly discouraging. But then when you look at uh, the Wednesday poll last week, you'll look at it nine days ago. It's only a three-point difference. Now, that's a brilliant thing in Wisconsin because if you look at the 538 polls, again, a three-point difference in the same poll, which uh, tells you that there's a trend, okay? Look at this other poll by the exact same company, Emerson College. You look at this, eight-point Baldwin W last month, this month, only up by three. You follow that up to any sort of logical consistency at all. And that leads to a Republican Senate in Wisconsin. Again, if the election were held today, it's a blue seat. So, well, for the sake of the context of the video, we're going to make that blue. But truth is, is that if this trend holds through, 
for I guess like the next seven to eight months, then it seems like Hoveday will win. If Trump wins in the state by like five, then obviously Hoveday will win by maybe three. So I mean that's just pretty obvious. Tammy Baldwin has no secret juice that we know of. So like I don't know why she'd do so much better than Joe Biden at the top of the ballot there. But moving on to Nevada. Okay, so let's look at Nevada. Nevada, uh, the presumable candidate in this case would be, and I guess you would say presumptive candidate, Sam Brown for the Republican nomination is lagging behind as of February by two points behind Jackie Rosen for the Senate seat. And according to this other poll, which is of a lesser quality, he's down by six in March. Then as of 10 days ago, he's down by two as well. But here we have 538 polling aggregate as well, and it shows a similar trend for Brown to lose by like two to Rosen. So that leads me to think it's going to be blue, at least for today. I will tell you this, though, is that Sam Brown, assuming he doesn't do anything too crazy, is going to beat a generic Democrat in Jackie Rosen, who herself has no special clout or anything, which will make me think that he's on track to beat her if Trump holds the lead in Nevada by as much as he really does, which, you know, some polls say is as high as seven, I would say maybe by like four. So, you know, a win by like one or two percent is completely in the cards, but you have to let that play out first. So for now, it's a blue state. The final state I wanted to talk about today is my home state, the best one, the dry seat. It's 83 degrees right now in March. Yeah, thank you very much. So referring to the lackluster polling here in uh, the 538, or sorry, the RCP aggregate, you're going to look at this and just look and just point of fact, notice that Gay goes leading by 10 in this polling last month, 7 in this most recent poll above that. And then even the most, again, the latest poll has them only up by two as of 10 days ago. And again, this was after cinema dropped out maybe like six weeks ago. So that effect metastasizes and probably will help Carrie Lake, in my opinion. Looking at these polls, by the way, you're going to look that they're still polling the primary as of a month ago, which shows that, I mean, obviously during a primary, the opponent against the incumbent looks weaker. The incumbent party being the Democrats, obviously. Uh, in, in a vague sense. But I mean, even looking at these polls that are more recent, you see that according to Rasmussen, as of last month, you have Lake up by three, Lake up by four in this election um, as of February. But even looking at two weeks ago, you have Lake down by one. Now, what that leads me to think personally is that Lake is underperforming Trump by a small margin. But what most people in Arizona don't don't know is that Ruben Gallego, as a congressional Democrat, does not have a lot of name recognition just writ large in the state, which leads you to think that most people do not know how far left he is. If you look at the Kerry Lake ads right now on her website, these are hitting him on the basis that he's further left than Joe Biden, which is true, by the way. He's also chubbier, which is horrible by all dimensions. But what is the worst thing, in my opinion, is that he is, again, running to the left to Biden who is losing Arizona to Trump currently in the polls by a lot, upwards of 5%, folks, which leads any rational American citizen to really understand that if Biden's losing the state by like five, then Kara Lake just needs to do not, she just has to not lag behind by more than five, which is completely predictable. Again, most people in the general elected do not know how bad Gallego's doing relative to Biden, and Biden's already unpopular. So just leading uh, to that logic, then clearly... You know, this sort of like moderate strain of Kirsten Cinema vote is not going to come out in droves for Ruben Gallego, which is what they need in uh, places like Maricopa County, et cetera. So if that's the case, then we're going to have Republican Arizona. Even if the election were held today, despite the polls for the most part not really bearing that out, I just can predict that gun to my head. That's what I'm going to say. Boom, boom, boom. There you go. 53 Senate seats for the GOP, 47 seats for the Democrats. It's looking kind of brutal, kind of bitter, kind of bad for the Democrats, you could say. But I mean, just looking at these facts, these numbers, these are somewhat pessimistic even. Um, again, if the Republicans do reasonably well, we could see a red Wisconsin, red Michigan, in best case, again, red Nevada. And then the next logical conclusion would be red Pennsylvania. But I really doubt that. But if the election were held today, folks, this is basically what you would see, in my opinion. Anyways, I'll catch you all in the next video. Adios.